Fouling on ships and other marine structures is a term that refers to the build-up of organic molecules and organisms on exposed surfaces. On ships, the increase in drag caused by this can increase fuel consumption up to 40% and overall travel costs up to 77%. In systems that use seawater, for example many power plants, fouling can cause clogging and increase maintenance costs. Fouling is traditionally thought to happen in stages, with the more problematic species colonizing towards the end. However, this has been shown to be more of a rule of thumb with groups such as barnacles able to settle on pristine surfaces. If anyone wants to invent something that will make them a multi-millionaire, I highly recommend solving this problem. Or just give me your idea, I'll cut you in. Throughout history, mariners have gone to great lengths to protect their ships from fouling. The Carthaginians used pitch on their hulls as far back as the first millennium BC and ancient Greeks speak of scraping the ooze from ships to allow them to slide faster, a technique still used today during dry docking. Up to the 18th century, wooden hulls were protected with pitch, tar, copper and lead sheathing. With the advent of iron ships, copper and lead sheathing was abandoned as it led to corrosion of the hulls. Over the next century, this led to the development of advanced anti-fouling paints. The most successful of modern paints is the tributyl tin, or TBT, self-polishing line of paints. Tributyl tin is a toxin added to the paints which slowly leaches out into the surrounding water, killing anything that tries to settle on the surface. By allowing the paint to self-polish, the rate of toxin release is kept constant throughout the life of the paint. TBT paints are highly effective at preventing settlement and can delay the need for dry docking by up to five years. The potential hazards of a massive fleet coating themselves in poison and then traveling around the globe leaching vast amounts into the environment should be obvious to anyone. It turns out TBT was particularly bad news for mollusks. Around Europe, high levels of the toxin led to softening of and poor development of the shells in some species and mutations leading to infertility in others. In the UK, the dog whelk, which was particularly susceptible, was nearly driven to extinction and is now only slowly recovering. It also led to high levels of tin buildup in fish, seabirds, and seals. Subsequently, these paints were banned on most vessels in 2008, leaving a new opportunity to find an environmentally friendly way to prevent fouling. After the ban on TBT, many have started looking at the chemicals that marine organisms use to prevent fouling on their own bodies, with a view of using these natural biocides as a replacement. Some have merely switched back to using copper-based biocides. I will say that I think people pursuing this avenue have completely missed the fucking point. The reason TBT turned out badly isn't because it was one of those evil man-made poisons. It's because it was a poison. Full stop. Using any biocide on the scale that it would take to keep a whole fleet clean is still going to leach into the environment and start wreaking havoc. We need an approach that removes biocides altogether. Foul release coatings are paints which have incredible smoothness at the molecular level. Organisms upon the surface are unable to form strong bonds and so are removed at high speeds. Unfortunately, the smaller organisms such as diatoms and bacterial mats are far more difficult to remove with this method, although they have less of an impact on drag than the larger organisms which are removed. Experiments into the use of electricity have proved effective in pipe systems, however, are not effective enough on the hulls of ships. My own university dissertation, spurred by the prospect of being a millionaire, looked at the effects of using sound waves to prevent settlement, however found no effect other than a boost to settlement at certain frequencies. So today's anti-fouling techniques are a mixture of new and old biocides and foul release coatings. We are still waiting for the next big thing.